Sometimes you just don't feel like doing physical therapy. If you've been following the channel, you know on week 13 of rotator cuff surgery recovery, I took a big hit starting phase three strengthening sessions. I became super weak, stiff, and achy. But on week 15, I started seeing improvements again. My shoulder began stabilizing. It still got tired and stiff, but that achiness decreased substantially from week 13. I started feeling a little stronger, like I was actually making progress again. But despite the progress, some days your shoulder just doesn't feel like it's ready for more therapy. I've been consistently getting three full sessions in every week with at least a day of rest between sessions. One day a week is typically with my physical therapist and the other two are at home. At the beginning of week 15, I had a really busy day and later that evening my family wanted to watch a late movie. I'm a huge movie buff and the kids were out of school, so of course I agree. It was midnight by the time everyone was in bed and I knew I had a PT session in 36 hours. I didn't want to miss a day of home PT because I know how important volume and consistency is. But if I waited until the next day, it wouldn't give me a full day to recover, so I did my PT until about 2 a.m. The day of PT came and my shoulder just didn't feel like it was ready for more therapy. I called my PT to reschedule, but it was another week until his next opening. He told me to come in and we could at least mobilize and do myofascial release. I was hesitant based on how my shoulder felt, but I trust my PT and went in. You met him in the week 14 video. His name is Dr. Dan Goodrich and he's a doctor of physical therapy. I'm going to refer to him as Dr. Dan from here out. Dr. Dan started the session with an evaluation. I was really stiff in some areas and my shoulder was really tired. He worked the shoulder and surrounding areas with assisted mobility, supine isometrics, and myofascial release. Then he applied some KT tape for my shoulder. As you may have watched in the week 14 video, Dr. Dan talked about the importance of volume during this phase of shoulder surgery recovery, but we want the correct type of volume. If you haven't watched Dr. Dan's advice, after this video, watch week 14, which is linked in the card above and the description below. Dr. Dan explained that on those days when my shoulder doesn't feel up to working, there are many other easier things I can do to help get volume in for that day. Don't feel like we have to, you know, oh, take, you know, totally gear back, take the day off, anything like that. No, let's find what we can do. And that's gonna give us a smooth, faster, happier ret return in recovery. Supraspinatus specifically, it's gonna be that external rotation and then the abduction. And you wanna be a little bit closer to the wall. So the, like the first 15 degrees of abduction is actually pretty much all supraspinatus. Okay. Deltoid doesn't really kick in until a little bit higher. Okay. Okay, so this lower range right in here is where if you're trying to really isolate supra, that's where you go. Okay. Okay. So for supraspinatus, those are the two. What you're experiencing here, because we can shut it down very quickly with just some quick isometrics, right? Your range of motion hasn't dropped, which if you had an inflammatory thing, it would, right? Uh, I can't shut off tendonitis with quick isometric work. It doesn't work that way. So what we have is, is more of an input and activation problem. It's input into the brain, brain acknowledging what's going on, processing the information, making an assignment of this is what's happening in my shoulder. We need to recalibrate the whole system and that's volume. And if we can't get the volume in, then we gotta change it, we modify it. So today we're getting a workout even though we weren't too sure about it, right? And even though we're a little short on our rest period and all of that, but yet here we are and it's going pretty well. Yeah, right? it's going great actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's way better than I thought. So, it did. After these simple but very effective tips, my shoulder felt really good and primed to work. What surprised me the most is that my shoulder actually felt stronger than usual. If you don't have a good physical therapist, I highly recommend finding one with the same mindset. Mine is truly amazing. When I arrived at PT, I didn't feel like being there. 20 minutes later, I felt like doing a full PT session. So I started my prescribed programming. As usual, I used my mini session to get warmed up. If you don't know what mini sessions are, watch the week 13 video for tips on warming up before a session and how to make recovery easier. You can find the link to that video in the card above or the description below. For my strengthening sessions, I'm still doing unbroken pull downs with internal rotation followed directly by rows. You may have noticed I've altered the angle of the rows by keeping my arms and elbows higher, but below 45 degrees. I make sure to use the correct amount of resistance to get 15 reps on each movement with no rest between. 
I rest 60 seconds, then repeat for a total of three sets. In the 21 days between weeks 13 through 15, I've moved up from three pounds to five pounds, and at the end of week 15, I'm up to seven pounds. With minimal tension, red bands are about three pounds and blue bands are about five pounds of resistance. To increase resistance on any band, I move further from the anchor point of my band and to decrease resistance, I simply move closer. On week 13 and a half, I added witties, otherwise known as W's, I's, T's, and Y's. In a prone position on a bench or physio ball with thumbs pointed toward the ceiling and shoulders packed, I move my arms upward in the position of a W, I, T, Y. These can be done in any order. I take a small break of 10 to 20 seconds between each movement before going to the next. I don't let my hands touch the ground and I'm sure to squeeze those shoulder blades together at the top of the movement. On week 14, I started with five reps on each of these four movements for a total of 20 reps each round and repeated that for a total of three rounds or 60 total reps. Those reps were so hard at first. But doing these consistently over the past two weeks, I've been able to increase to three rounds of 15 on each movement, which is a total of 60 reps per round, repeated for a total of three rounds. Yes, that's a total of 180 reps. When I first started doing these, I felt really weak and feeble. It was really discouraging. I wouldn't have ever thought I would be tripling my volume in just two weeks. The next movement was halo presses. I use the back of my hands to maintain tension against an object that's less than shoulder width. While maintaining tension, I keep my elbow stacked directly below my wrist through the entire range of motion. If the wrist and elbow are not completely vertical, it's a no rep. So I want to get these right. 12. 13. No rep. Give me another one. 14. For me, this was by far the most difficult thing I did, and it's the range where I have the most issues. When I started these on week 14, my first goal was to get 20 reps in as short a time as possible. I could only get five reps before breaking. After a short rest, I did five more reps before breaking again. It took me four sets and three breaks to get those 20 reps. That was a killer for me. Fast forward to the end of week 15, and I was doing three sets of 15 unbroken. A big improvement. When Dr. Dan asked me to put equal pressure on all fours, at first I asked him if he was sure. Yeah, I was a bit apprehensive. When I first got on all fours, Dr. Dan pointed out I had hardly any pressure on my involved arm. I was so used to protecting that shoulder, I didn't even realize it. I gently started putting more and more of my body weight on that arm, being careful to keep my arm completely straight and to pack those shoulders. I spent about 20 to 30 seconds at a time in this position followed by a short rest. This was repeated three times. Over the past few weeks, I've worked up to longer segments and increased difficulty by moving side to side and back and forth. I use the same concept for shoulder depressions. From a seated position, I maintain straight arms and only depress my scapula while using assistance from my feet and legs. I did three sets of 15 on these. At first, I used a lot of leg assistance, but I have worked up to using less and less assistance from my lower body. The last two movements were bicep curls starting at two and a half pounds on week 14. I did these as a superset with lying tricep extensions using the same weight for a total of three sets of 15 reps on each movement. I've incrementally added weight over the past two weeks and ended with four pounds at the end of week 15. Phase three of rotator cuff surgery recovery is a phase of physical therapy that becomes a lot more interesting. Increasing difficulty with set, rep, and resistance schemes. Consistently adding different movements on an almost weekly basis. This phase of shoulder surgery recovery is a balance between pushing too hard or not pushing enough. The goal is to hit the sweet spot of being tired the day after a therapy session, but being ready to hit it again two days later. It's getting used to consistently feeling weaker in order to get stronger. When this happens to you in your recovery, stay positive and keep following your healthcare team's advice. After a few weeks, that shoulder starts doing things you didn't think it could do before because it got stronger. This is just another small step toward being normal again. Stay the course and stay positive. You'll get there. 
If you find this information helpful or think it will help others, make sure to like and subscribe. It'll help get this information out to those who need it. That's all I've got for you. See you soon.